Lord, uh, there's so many uh, good things that come with the holidays, getting together with family and, and, and seeing everyone's faces, Lord, but you are better than all of it, Lord. We thank you that, uh, Lord, that you are the gift and you are the, the thing that keeps us going. So we just pray, Father, as we get into your word now, that we draw a little closer to you this morning. And so in Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Take another minute. Say good morning. Kids. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. All right. Good morning. So, so what an exciting time of the year. This is a new time, a new beginnings type, uh, type of uh, a walk. You know, a lot of people start to come up with their, their uh, New Year's resolutions, and they start to come up with different things that are, that are uh, promises that you know that they'll never keep. <laughs> and and I, I can't help but think as I was preparing this lesson and I was, uh, this sermon, I was thinking of, of the, um, the uh, Christmas carol. And, and how they had, you know, the Christmas past and the Christmas present and the Christmas future. And this may seem a little redundant for some of you because I, a few weeks back I had said this thought had kind of gone through my head. But, but I'm thinking now, in this case, it's, it's Father time, God time. In other words, God's the God of the past, he's the God of the present, and the God of the future. And, and so often, it, it, the, Lord, the Lord will tell us not to look back. Don't look back. Once you put your hand to the plow, keep going forward. And yet, you know, when, when, when um, the lepers were healed, Jesus commended the one leper who turned back and thanked God. The Bible is full of stories and psalms to give the history of what God has done. In other words, the nation Israel looked back of their liberty and their freedom from Egypt. And they sang praises. And there's many songs that Moses had written, you know, so, so the children would remember what the Lord has done. So I think that the, that, that the first thing we want to make sure we're always doing is looking back in thanks and praise for what the Lord has done. There's too often we just rush through life and we're not... Um, uh, too often we're, we're walking through this life and we're not looking back at what the Lord has done for us and, and giving thanks and praise. And I think it's time today, the new year, the first service of the message, to do just that. Let's look back. And, and, and the Bible says, look, um, look to the Lord for his strength. Seek his face always, remembering the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he's pronounced in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11 through 12. The Lord in this church last year, despite COVID, has brought a brother to the salvation of the Lord, Josiah. He's brought, he's brought Rano to our church. He's brought Carrie to the salvation of Jesus Christ. He's brought Garrett to the salvation of Jesus Christ. He's brought a renewal of someone in England, Diana. And all four of these people, well, four of these people had gotten baptized We've got one in our church, Joe's son, Joshua, came to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and was baptized. We had a baptism in the church. We had over 30 visitors that have come through this church. We had three pastors from around the world come and preach in this church. We've had 
blessing upon blessing. We paid our rent up from June all the way to the end of the year this year ahead of time to help the, 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 the person who's co-renting this place with us because she had her business pretty much closed down because of COVID. In the midst of COVID, the Lord has been a beacon of blessing upon us in this church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again and again and again, I could go on and on with the praise. Not one person, praise the Lord, got COVID in this church. Not one. Think about that. That's pretty amazing. We had someone who was in a Bible study who, again, the Lord, the, 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 the day said he would die if he had one more cigarette. He got COVID and he lived through COVID. He's come and visited the church twice since then. Think about that, guys. The Lord is hearing our prayers. The Lord has blessed us abundantly. Are we stopping and looking and thanking the Lord? He's taking the little and he's made multiplication of a lot. Amen. Enter his house with thanksgiving and praise. Remember what the Lord's done. Why? Because if you remember what he's done in the past, it gives you confidence of the future. Doesn't it? It gives you confidence for today. The Bible says every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heaven and light, who does not change his shifting or shift. He has already commissioned us. He's not changing that commission. He's not taking back his salvation from those who have given their hearts to him. He holds you in his hands forevermore. Did he hold you through this last year despite the craziness upon this world like we've never seen? Never seen. Some would say these are even the birth pains of the end times as this has never happened. This is an unprecedented thing in the world. People are scared. People are tormented. But the Lord held you. Are you breathing today? Are you fed? Do you have shelter? God has been with you. Give thanks. Why are we so focused on what we don't have instead of what the Lord has given us? I was thinking of Christmas presents. And as I'm wrapping all these presents, and I told you I hate wrapping, and I'm my back sore, I'm wrapping these presents for, for my wife, because that's pretty much all I buy for a deputy, and then she comes over at Christmas Eve. So I'm wrapping these presents, my back's all sore. <laughs> And I thought about it, and I was like, you want to know something? Not even 50 years ago, maybe 60 years ago, all they would get is one gift that maybe was handmade mm -hmm. and, and was in a stocking that had some fruit and some nuts. And the kids would get up, and they were just so elated just to get this one stocking that was this one gift they knew that the family had put together for them. It was only one gift, and that would be the gift they would cherish. Now they're tearing up hundreds of presents that the boxes are stacked and, and they're going to go in the closet and they're going to cut dust. None of them meaning not much to any of them. Think about what are we giving thanks to God because he gives us bounty. But it's the simple things he gives us that, that the world would give their whole life for. Contentness, peace, joy. What has the Lord given you this year? Let's turn around and give thanks. In the midst of a chaotic world, Attacked by Satan, he's given us peace. Peace. Joy. The Bible tells us, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is what the scriptures tell us. The Lord made today. Today, he's the God of today, just as he was yesterday. He's no different. He's unchanging, unwavering. And everything he does, he doesn't change. We change. We're in a chaotic world that's ever-changing. Our life changes. Even as you go from a normal world, from young to teens, you know, you go to people going through teens. I was counseling a brother in, in, in the Lord who's, who's in his 20s and just going through all those emotions with that relationship. You know how it is. We've all been there, right? Ah, oh, we're ready to do anything. I'll die for that woman if I don't have her, right? And I'll die for that guy. If I... And those emotions, we have changes in our lives. Don't we? I said, hang in there, brother. We've all been there. You're going to get better. It's going to get better. Trust me. What about when the whole world is changing all around us, right? Every day you wake up, you don't know what's going to befold you or behold you. But yet, I do know the one who's ordered those steps for that day. Mm -hmm. I do know the one, before I've woken up, he's already prepared a day for me. And I'm to rejoice and be glad in this earth. 
it, it, it's in the midst of understanding his character. Understanding that he's the giver of every good and perfect gift. Understanding that he's ordered every step. Understanding that Satan can't make a move without the Lord knowing it. Even my enemies will be sub subjected to God Almighty. Therefore, what do I fear with the day above that the, 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 the thought that I'm going to run into? What am I fearful of? Instead, why don't I run into my day with excitement? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He's still God today, guys. We need to enter into that, right? Enter into thanksgiving and praise. As we enter into the new year, I said that we start the year off, a lot of us, with all these promises. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with setting goals. I mean, we, we should definitely try to make plans and, and, and to do things that are right. God says that he has a plan for you already, a future, right? He says, in, he said, forgetting the former things, don't, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness, the streams, the wastelands, Isaiah 43, 18. And then it says in um, Jeremiah 29, 11, many of you may know this already by heart. If you don't, I recommend you memorize this because this is the thing that will encourage you no matter where you're at. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen. That <laughs> other word there, the Hebrew word means an expected, end, an expected end. I already know the end. I've prepared the end for you. It's not a maybe, it, it will happen. An assurance, praise God. And, and as we think about this, we look back on these blessings, and we, we want to make plans. The Lord tells us that we're, that we're to make our plans, right? And, and it's, some people think, well, if God's got it all ordered, and God's got today, and God's got tomorrow, you know what, I'm just gonna live today, be happy, be merry, and, and do my own, you know, do, live my own thing. And why, why bother? Isn't that how sometimes we feel? This is why sometimes religion becomes dead to us. This is why sometimes we feel like there's no meaning. Because the sovereignty of God, why bother? But did you know Christ came so that you would be a part of this plan that he has? He's giving you minds like no other people around you. Fearfully, wonderfully made in his image, but gifted uniquely. Uniquely. So what are your plans? If you don't plan ahead, you're, you're sure to fail. The Bible says where there's no vision... There's, there's that. There, the church won't succeed. There, if there's no vision, if there's no preparing, if there's no planning, then you won't have success. It says in uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 16, it says, A wise man thinks ahead, and a fool doesn't, even brags about it. I don't need to plan. I just go by the seat of my pants. No. If you have something you want to achieve in this world, then plan for it. Make goals. Set goals, plan. It says in Luke chapter 14, For which of you intended to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and it is, uh, is unable to finish it, all who see begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was unable to finish. How many of us enter into Christianity with no plan? I'm saved, I'm done, that's it. But the Lord's mapped out certain steps. We're to grow. We're just babes when we first come into the study, right? We must be born again. Some of us have heard all these Christian things, and we've got it all up here, and we're walking around, head knowledge, but nobody's ever got to the track and started practicing. Put it into play. Have a plan. I had a brother last night, and I commend him. It, it, it's been amazing. I've had a lot of counseling sessions lately, a lot. They've all come in all at once, so pray, pray for me to have the right time. I don't want no one left behind. I want everybody to have what they need to walk right. To have a plan. Not just words, a plan. And this brother says to me, you know what, I love my wife, and I love my daughter, but I feel like I'm failing them. I know what I should do, but I don't know how to do it. Can I meet with you? Can we counsel? And I said, absolutely. And we sat down. And, it, and we mapped out some steps. Here's the scriptures. Let's make sure your mind is right. 
Let's make sure everything's right. Let's see what God says. Let's see how he changes your mind so your heart will change and your actions will follow. Let's put into practice faith. Faith is not just a belief. Faith is action, James says. I will show you my faith through my works. I'm not saved by my works, but I have a plan. I'm doing things to map out my goal. No matter what it is in life. Whether you want to be a doctor, and some of the, some of our college kids that are, that are online maybe are, are listening, you need to have a plan. Or whether it's just to be a good husband, or whether it's to be a good wife, or whether it's to be a good son, daughter, whatever it may be, get a plan. And so we mapped out something, and we had a homework assignment. And by the way, when I counseled, just like always, I was counseled, and now I've got homework. So, so I'm walking away with a plan. Now, do I do these things because I think, well, this is going to fix it. I've got my plan. No, no. My plans are all in, in God's plan. See, I'm planning, but my plan should never be to usurp God's plan. None of my plans should ever be to usurp God's plans. Right? I should always be ready that my plan will take a back step to God. Right? It, it says that it's, it's been said that people plan and uh, uh, men and mice, but their plans go awry. People probably heard that that quote used quite often. I prefer Mike Tyson's. Everyone comes in with a plan until they get punched, <laughs> and then the, that plan goes right out the window. Right? <laughs> it's like that's over. So you need to be always ready for God's plan to come in and knock you off your feet. Sometimes, Amen. Sometimes God says, "That's not my plan." I have something better for you. You'd be surprised how many times we plan something that's way below what God has expected for you. The blessings he has for you. Always be ready for God to come in and change your plans. And I already read two of those scriptures to you about God's plans for us. And there's another one. 1 Peter 5 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. See, the thing that happens when our plans start to get thwarted, we start to become fearful. I made all these plans for the new year. I have all these goals, and I come and I command you to do this. Please do. Please set up quick, tangible goals. Do things that you want to do to draw closer to God. First and foremost, the Lord said, "Do all things unto the Lord." No matter what it is, do all things with all your heart, mind, and soul. Go in wholeheartedly. Don't be afraid to go wholeheartedly in faith in whatever goal you have set for yourself. But before you go. Talk with the Lord. Talk with the Lord. This is what I told him. And I don't think he expected this. As I'm counseling, and I said, why are you doing this? Oh, I want my, my wife to love me. I want my daughter to love me. I said, wrong. You will never, ever meet that goal. It's an unattainable goal. You need to do it to please the Lord. As you please the Lord, the Lord will take care of your wife and your children. Everything's in proper order then. Jesus said, unless you hate your wife, hate your father, hate your brother, hate your mother, you cannot be my disciple. You need to put me first. I will take care of the rest. Where are our goals? You want to succeed? Please the Lord. Whatever it is you're doing, I don't care what it is, it doesn't matter. Make sure your plans are in line with his, and he will line up your family. He will handle the rest. Things that you can't do, because they will try to make you be their God. You will never meet that goal, ever. But you can walk in faith with the Lord. And the Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. But if you do something in faith, with your heart, wholehearted in it, unto the Lord, you will see fruit. I guarantee it. You will see fruit. And you'll be baffled. And then who gets the glory? Not you. God gets the glory. To God be the glory. Amen? And people will look to your God. People will want your God. That's our goal, right? We started out as a church. The goal is to spread the gospel message. In the midst of COVID, as I said, four people came to the saving grace and knowledge of Christ. Four people were baptized. We had many, many more come and visit that, that had given their hearts and, and you know, gone other places. That's fine. But we're doing what the Lord's asked by faith. Amen? 
We're showing, it. we have a plan, and we're entering into that plan, but then God came and threw a mix in it. How about COVID? How about now you go into social media, and now you're on YouTube, and now you're on Facebook, and now you're on your website, and now you're, you know, all these things you never Zoom. Now you're on reaching people around the world. People in California who come on, people from Florida who come on, people from England who come on. It wasn't my plan. I had a vision. My vision was way low. God had a bigger vision. But you must hit start by faith. You must start somewhere. So this year, let's start with a plan. But what happens, guys? You're going to start with your plan, as I mentioned. And, and in the midst of walking forward, you're going to fail. You're going to see that things just don't work. I'm, a, I'm my second job. I'm an IT program project manager. What that means is I manage people, resources, and money and all kinds of things. I have a lot of different monies and, and, and people and resources I have to manage towards a goal of the project. And one of the things they tell you to do is how you plan is how smooth your project is going to go. The most time you spend is in that planning time. The most time for a Christian in their life to be successful is in the planning time with God in your prayer closet, in the Word, lining things up, mapping right. Spend the most time in your planning phase. But even in the midst of all of that, guys, we planned in IT. Nobody planned on having 90 to 100% of IT have to go mobile. But we did it in a month. We had to adjust, we had to be agile, we had to be quick, right? The same thing, with your plan to be successful, you may have to go back to God again and again and again and get the resources you need to get in line. But don't quit. My encouragement is to you, don't quit. The Lord says, don't grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you don't quit. Don't quit. That's what the devil wants you to do is, oh, I guess that plan was bad, I'm done. Look, you're never going to lose that weight if you go on all these diet plans. It needs to be a life change experience. It needs to be a, I'm not going to quit, no matter what. I'm going to persevere. And not because I want people looking at me, but because I want to please the Lord. I need to take care of my wife when I get old. Get old, I'm already old. But, but, right, I need to be able to do these things. Take care of my home. Preach. For that reason, I need to tend to this temple, care for it, right? Gary, exercise profits the body little, but let me exercise my spirit just as much. Many of you are having these diets to lose weight, but what about diets to grow in the Lord? What's your prayer life like? What's your morning devotions like? I try to help each other, one of you guys out. There's this, there's this, um, uh, I was thinking of ratatouille, where you have a soup stew that kind of becomes a never-ending stew. So you got things in there like four months old, and it just keeps going. But but there's also that yeast bread, right? That people used to have. They would just have one little ball of dough with yeast, and they would take that and break it and make a loaf. And then this would go on. And they would take the next loaf and take another piece. And this loaf could go on for years. I'm just giving you the yeast thing. Some of you, I send a devotion to. It's out on the website. That's just the yeast for you to go back to that chapter and ponder and chew and build your own bread and learn and grow. This is, this is just to start you. I'm equipping you as a pastor, but you need to walk your walk. You need to have a plan. Next week, we're starting a Back to Basics course. I'm encouraging you to please attend that. This is a class that we're going to get back to the fundamentals of Christianity, to have a plan of how to encourage you in your walk. Some of you come from many different religions. Some of you come from many different ideologies. Sometimes we need to just get back, empty ourselves of all of that and say, what does the scripture say? What's real versus ideas, right? That's a plan. Maybe that could be on your plan. It'll probably be one of the most beneficial things you could do next year. This year, I mean, for this year. Get back to basics. But the plans are going to run into problems. They always do. This world, we have an enemy who's coming against your plan. As soon as he sees you walking by faith, you become enemy number one. And what's the first thing I see people get saved? I remember, I remember when um, Ronnie got 
got saved, her grandfather is a very, very um, seasoned Christian. He said, here comes the attacks. As soon as she got baptized, here comes the attacks. And I'm like, ah, keep your eyes on the Lord, you'll be fine. Which is true. But the attacks are coming. And they will come like you've never seen. Because you're walking by faith. And when you walk by faith, you're a bright light. And Satan hates light and tries to put it out. So no matter what your goals are, always expect adversity. If it's worth anything, there's going to be adversity. You're going to expect these things. But what does the Lord say? Don't fear not, for I am with you. He says in uh, Philippians, I've already said this, will be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Bring it back to the planning man. Bring it back to the resource. And then it says, um, trust in the Lord in Proverbs 3, 6. With all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. He will make your plan succeed. I cannot tell you, and this is the God's honest truth, how many things go wrong in the projects that I'm in at work. And these are very complex projects. And, and anything that can go wrong often does go wrong. Everything you planned for, you didn't plan for. <laughs> and, and it's just amazing. And we have deadlines we have to meet. And, and if you don't meet these deadlines, you're not getting bonuses. And the vice presidents aren't getting bonuses. And people aren't going to get paid to all this stuff. And so you're, you're thinking, Lord, I can't do this. I'm talking to God in the midst of, of meetings where I'm having to meet with my presence. I'm overwhelmed. And next thing you know, things just start falling in order. When I cry out, almost like when I had that dog, I told you guys, my dog just got attacked recently by a, by a mastiff. And I'm punching it with my puff arms, my puff gloves, doing nothing. It wasn't until I cried out, oh my God, oh my God, that he said, oh, okay, I'll take over now. And my goal was met. This mastiff just let go and backed up four feet. We need to come to the Lord. He expects us to come to him for the strength. And supernatural things will happen. The impossible. This is why I said, don't plan small. Plan big. Plan big. And walk by faith. And don't fear. It says in... Um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. The Lord desires you to come with all your petitions. He wants to bless you more than you can imagine. He says, you have not because you ask not. This year, let's be a praying church. I wanted this, this sermon to be a bookend with prayer. We started out with the, with the, with the Father time past, giving thanksgiving and supplications and prayers for what the Lord has done. And I wanted to end this sermon with Father Future, who's prepared a place for you. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go there to prepare a place for you. There's a, to give you an expected end, as we just said, I already know where you're going to be. We already win. We already have victory. Don't you see the joy in that? Don't you see the, the, the joy you should have? What's holding you back from going out and doing the impossible? Converting souls unto Jesus Christ. Preaching the gospel. Changing in a dark world. The impossible. Seeing beyond this world. What is stopping you when you've got the safety net of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's got your backing? One of the things I can honestly say, I'm successful in some of my projects because I know my boss has my back. I, this one project I was on was incredible. It literally touched every facet of IT. And all, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. But my vice president was right there behind me in meetings, making things happen. What could stop me? My vice president's behind me. How can I not succeed? God's behind you. Why are you timid this year? Do not be timid because of COVID. Do not be timid because of the government. Do not be timid because of anything. Go out and meet your goals. And in the midst of all these goals, aligning with Christ Jesus, I can guarantee you, you will succeed. Because God is for you. Who can be against you? Who will stop you? You. You in your unbelief. You are your worst enemy. Not God. He's saying, come to me. <laughs> I want to bless you. I look upon you and I want to pour favor upon you. Hebrews 13, 6 says, So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What, what can mere mortals do unto me? 
In Proverbs 3, we'll close with this scripture verse. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and not on your understanding, but all the ways. Submit to him, and he will direct your paths and make you straight. We can't be holy unless we trust God's holiness. You know, oftentimes, guys, our goals are to impress others. Our goals are to be people pleasers. Look, we don't have to please anybody but God. And he's done all that we need for salvation on the cross. He bled where we could not. He died where we could not come back to life. He rose. And he's given this gift freely to you so you can run, so you can be free, so you can be lights in this world, to be beacons of hope. You want to change? Please God. You will never please your wife. You will never please your husband. You will never please your children. It'll be temporary. And then their expectations will be higher and higher and higher, and you will never achieve them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He will order your steps. He will order your children. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the new beginnings that you give us. I thank you that you make all things new, Lord. Every day we're made new and renewed in you. And Lord, you, you even in the end say you're going to take the heavens and the earth and roll them up as a scroll and, and bring a new heaven and a new Jerusalem and a new earth. Lord, these things are exciting. We know that this is not our home, that we're just passing through. Help us to pass through as mighty ambassadors, Lord. Children of God, angels sent from you and with a message to change and turn this world upside down. I pray, Father God, that there be no timidness in us, that we be wholly bold and filled with confidence because you're for us. And if you're for us, who can be against us? Thank you for all you're going to do in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.